Hi folks. Um, so this is the uh, final, is it? Let me just check. Yes, it's the final Landforms uh, video. You'll be pleased to know. Um, this is now much more exotic and lovely. Uh, coral reefs and mangroves. Okay, now I am going to ask you uh, to do these semi-independently. I do want to emphasise semi-independently. Um, you're going to get an introduction from me today and then it will become a project for you. This would have been exactly the same uh, if you had been at college and things had been normal. We, we always set this as a research project because it's quite straightforward. Uh, it's actually quite nice to research these because you have to look at the tropics, which is always a bit more exotic and lovely than uh, maybe the coast of the UK. Sorry. Uh, so, coral reefs and mangroves, an introduction from me. This PowerPoint in the coasts folder is funnily enough, called Coral Reefs and Mangroves, so it should be pretty easy for you to find. And what we want you to do is to cover these four things. Now you could do a poster, a PowerPoint, revision cards, a Word document. Honestly, as ever with me, I don't care what format you use, it's about the quality of the information uh, that is in them. That's, that's the really important bit. And I'm going to try and give you a flavour of these four bullet points today. So I guess what you might want to do at some point when you're ready is to pause at this point so that you can copy that down or copy and paste it or whatever you want to do. Now, loads of videos. Um, quite short to all of them, um, I think two, three minutes. Um, I've just done a bit of trawling to save you having two, basically, um, useful videos. Coral reefs have had loads of documentaries on them. They've been on Blue Planet. I mean, to be honest, they're probably on most programmes that David Attenborough has ever been involved with. Um, so you are not going to find a shortage of information about uh, this. Right, coral reefs, beautiful, lovely, amazing things. Also, ladies and gents, important for the carbon cycle. I'll just remind you. Um, so, we talked in the carbon cycle about diffusion, which is where carbon dioxide diffuses into seawater, and then by um, a sequence of various things, you end up with calcium carbonate, which is where seashells get made, etc. Well, calcium carbonate is also what coral is made from. So this is, they are part of the carbon cycle. Um, coral reefs are important for, for so many things, really. In terms of coastlines, this is the bit that I really need you to know. And I've got a diagram to show you later. Um, basically, they are really good at taking energy out of waves. So they are an excellent coastal defence system for reasons I'll explain later. They're a carbon store, they're a diversity hotspot, they're just amazing, brilliant, wonderful things. Three types, I'm not going to say too much about them here, um, other than you've got a definition and you've got a diagram, and of course you can Google um, if you want to know more about those. Coral reefs tend to form in the tropics, so we've got the Tropic of Cancer, the Tropic of Capricorn, remember my very childish way of remembering which way round they go, the Tropic of Capricorn has more letters in it, so it was heavier and it sank to the bottom. Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn. Notice that coral reefs are generally between them. And that is what tropical actually means, ladies and gents. You are going to need a case study of the Great Barrier Reef at some point. So uh, please remember to do that. Some of you I know have already done it um, because it comes up in global governance. Um, so the idea is that in global governance, the case study is about how the Great Barrier Reef is protected because it's protected at an international level, at a national level, it's protected by a whole different uh, load of things. Here, it's just as a coral reef, as a sort of really important ecosystem, etc. So at some point, if you haven't done it already, you are going to need a case study of the Great Barrier Reef. But what I will do 
is uh, towards the end of this module, depending on whether we're back in or not, or whatever's going to go on, we will talk about coastal case studies and what's needed and all of that kind of stuff. Mangroves. Okay, these are much less talked about than coral reefs, but equally important to be perfect honest. Notice that we are still talking tropical and actually one of the things that I want you to try and emphasize in this is that coral reefs and mangroves generally occur together because they are symbiotic. Now if you're a biologist you'll know what that means. It means they sort of work together but I'll talk to you more about that. So we're talking tropics. Mangroves are trees, mangrove forests, mangrove swamps. They've got different names, but they have this very unique appearance. You've got the tree and you've got this really cool root system. Now, those roots are really important for reasons I'll talk about more in a minute. That's what it looks like slightly above. So they're very cool things. Um, quite dangerous places because often you find crocodiles and snakes and all sorts of things in mangrove swamps, but they look nice in a photograph at least. Okay, so the roots. How on earth can a tree cope by living in the sea? Well, it's got to be pretty tough, hasn't it? So they have these amazing roots that filtrate most of the salt out of the roots and anything that accidentally gets in get shoved into old leaves which then fall off. I told you in another video, nature's got everything sussed, it really has. So they're very clever plants. Um, and why are they important to us? Why are they important coastal landforms? Well, because they slow down water. They encourage deposition, they take the energy out of waves to slow down erosion, etc, etc. And um, what we're beginning to realise, I said this for salt marshes in a previous video, we spent decades kind of trying to get rid of salt marshes, to drain them, turn them into farmland, then we realised we'd been idiots and now we're desperately trying to put them all back again. That's kind of where we're at with mangroves as well. Uh, lots of mangrove forests were removed, they um, were in the way of beautiful tourist beaches and things like that um, and now we're kind of going, ah. Uh, they're actually really good at protecting coastlines. They would be quite helpful in the fight against sea level rise. Um, and we're trying as best we can to repair the damage we created. So, symbiotic, mutually beneficial. Reefs take the energy out of waves, which protect mangroves. Mangroves keep the water clean because, of course, in order to photosynthesize, below the water, you are going to have to have sunlight. If you've got muddy, dirty water, that is not going to happen. So mangroves keep the water nice and clean, which means that the reef can photosynthesize. They are also really good nurseries for fish, which I'll talk to you about more in a bit. Um, so here's just a little diagram about what reefs do. You might remember in our waves part of the syllabus, we were talking about the reason that waves break is because the bottom of the wave goes into shallow water and it's like somebody tripping over. If the bottom of your body slows down and the top of your body is going at the original speed, unfortunately there can be a tendency to fall flat on your face. Well, look, reefs make the water shallower. So actually they slow the wave down, they might even make it break out here, which means that your coastline is nice and protected. That's going to help protect the mangrove if there's one there as well. So that's really clever. And then um, the fish larvae tend to hang out in mangrove roots where it's quite protected and very calm and you're less likely to get eaten. And then they go out to the coral reef where they're grown up. So, yeah, mangroves and corals are symbiotic. They look after each other, which is why you tend to find them in similar parts of the world. Okay, all very clever. All part of a system, ladies and gents. Amazing stuff. Um, and there's a slightly more beautiful and detailed version of how a coral reef 
and the mangrove swamp work together. Notice that this clearly is quite a key idea, that they work together and help each other out. Okay, I'm just going to go back to the instructions. Right, sorry. Uh, conditions needed for them to form, step-by-step -step description, that should be reasonably straightforward. Um, for coral reefs, you're going to be talking about calcium carbonate and all that kind of stuff. Um, second one is obviously the tropics. And then tell me why you only find them in the tropics. It's obviously going to do with sunlight and um, heat and all those kinds of things. Their importance for coastal processes and landforms. I've really emphasised that in um, this PowerPoint because that's the bit that students tend to find it hardest to answer. So that's the bit I wanted to spend most time talking about. If you don't want to do your case study of the Great Barrier Reef yet, don't worry about it too much. Leave it until we get to the case study section, which will be right at the end of the module. But if you want to start doing some research into what it is, why it's important, how it's protected, that would be brilliant as well. All right, so that is a bit of research for you to do. That will not be due in until the end of next week and I will clarify that in an email to you. So please no panic or stress, absolutely not needed at all. And I've said this to a few of you in an email, but if you're really busy working or doing some essential helpful stuff at this weird time and you need a bit longer, just be honest, just message me and explain the situation and we can negotiate. Okay, thanks everyone.